If India is a bad place for uh, business, in automotive nobody would come. But this is the best sign. 22 people only own a car. The reason being that the congestion that you see is only in metro cities. India is 70% rural. And if you go to rural areas, the penetration is not there. B-class town, C-class town, there is hardly any penetration. And the population sits there, not in uh, metro cities. Metro may be high. Delhi has a population of maybe 2.5 crore. And uh, car, car would be the highest numbers of car. In fact, Kolkata, Bangalore, Mumbai took together. Delhi has more registered vehicle than all these three cities put together. But that does not mean that the national average is high. So this is just a question I am uh, putting to you. But another question I am putting to you quickly. How many of you have driven a car? Kitne long ke pass license hai? Why kitne long ke pass hai? Okay, good. So any idea in a typical car, combustion engine car, uske andar mein kitne component hote honge? How many parts would be there? I mean all large, small, child parts, all kinds. Nut bolt bhi jod lo. Kitne honge? Huh? One thousand. More than thousand. Any guess this side? Engineers? I, I saw some hands. This question is for engineers. Not saying making of the entire car. Ruling of the car in one shift. Ki ek gaadi ke baad, aapne bottling plant dekhe honge? Movies mein ya kahin pe. Ki kis tarikhe se bottle nikal raha hai, coca cola, how it is coming out of FC. But if you look at the car, if you go to a manufacturing plant, and the, the way car is assembled, you have any idea what is the tag time or rollout time? One car ke baad, dosri gaadi, kitne der mein ban ke aati hai? Ten minutes. Anybody else? Seconds. Three hours. Okay. Any guess? Six hours. Six hours. Okay. Fifteen hours. यार छह घंटे में गाड़ी बनेगी तो फिर पूरे दिन में कितनी बनेगी तो बिजनेस ही वायबल नहीं होगा वन टू आर्स ओके तो अगर एक घंटे में एक गाड़ी बनती है तो आठ घंटे में एक लाइन पे कितनी गाड़ी बनेगी आठ गाड़ी बनेगी और तीन शिफ्ट में भी काम करेंगे तो कितनी गाड़ी बनेगी एक लाइन पे और अगर मान लो हमारे पास छह लाइन भी है तो कितनी गाड़ी बनेगी एक दिन में इस दी बिजनेस वाइबल थिंक क्या यू एस ए मैनेजमेंट ग्रेजुएट विल हैव टू थिंक डू रैडिकल थिंकिंग टू मिनट्स वन टू टू this guy said less than 10 seconds and you all are laughing. All are laughing and I'll tell you, he is close to the correct answer. We roll out a car every 12 seconds. And you can calculate, we make 6,000 cars a day, sometimes 6,500 also. And you can do the backward calculation if you have Calculus की जरूरत नहीं है, simple arithmetic की जरूरत है। अगर हम nine o'clock register will be there, after nine o'clock register will be taken out from there and put into the boss's room. So the moment you come, you have to walk into boss's room and then sign the register, right? Which was very painful. And uh, today what I see is, uh, you know, uh, the then came the time of uh, you know token system, punching machine, all kind of system evolved. Today what we see is that we walk into an office and attendance is recorded. So there are face reading machine, iris, and everything is uh, digital. So see the world how it has changed. In fact, the worker in a manufacturing plant, when they used to come, there used to be a token system. So they will pick up a, you know, there is a token number that they are given and they will put the token in the box. When their shift ends, they will have to collect their token from the rack, number wise it is put, 
so that he is gone out. But the story doesn't end there. Even if they are inside, whether they have reached their shop floor or machine, nobody knows. They may vanish somewhere inside the plant. So there is at least four time attendance done at the shop floor. So there is a local attendance where there is a physical check done. Look at the way things were used to be done earlier. Tedious, time consuming. You are not sure whether the data accuracy is there or not. And then payroll, for example, you work for a month, you get your salary. This salary was made on paper. The calculation was done on paper. And the salary which was given was given in cash. And there used to be a small uh, paper given that this is your salary. No details. What is the PF contribution? What is, that you, have, you will be getting separately. Then slowly, you know, Things like super cal and all those came, which is the erstwhile, uh, you know, Excel and all that you are using. Then it started getting calculated on that salary, and even the pay slip was very simple, computer generated. Today you have automated system. Today you have ERPs. Today you have such a system in the organization which is seamless which is all speaking to each other. Once your details are created in the master, everything is automated. And your attendance system and everything is, if you are inside the factory, automated. If you are outside the factory, you, on your mobile app, you can simply register your attendance. And it is real time, and it has got a, what you call, uh, location from where you have. Like for example, somebody is in sales. How is attendance will be recorded? So if he if he is in the region, say for example he is in Okla, or for example he is in Ghaziabad, and he punches attendance from there, so it is recorded that he has punched attendance from Ghaziabad. So we know he is on duty, right? If he punches from home, it will be recorded. So what I am trying to say that there is a disruption which is happening. Please understand. The pace of disruption was very, very slow. I remember when we, we were young, uh, looking into the car market itself. We saw Ambassador and Fiat. And Ambassador uh, was Mark II when I was a kid. Then came Mark III Ambassador. Hardly any change, but some features got changed. And then finally it was Mark IV after which they launched Contessa. But the pace of change was very, very slow. Things used to change after 10 years, 20 years. Same thing will continue. That has happened in the last 15, 20 years. But if you look at pandemic, this is like a catalyst. It has actually accelerated the pace of change. Everything has got disrupted. What has happened is that even uh, your lucky batch the batch of 20, and I have been to various colleges, they joined college, they passed out, they got placed, they did not see their college, they did not have the opportunity to sit like you, or go to the canteen, or enjoy so many you know facilities of the college. Many of them at the fag end, they just went to their work life balance. I need time for myself. This is the voice of new generation. And what has happened? The company changed. Company had to, you know, give five day week to this generation. And this is done because of the, you know, the demand of this. So there is a changing demand, changing need. And uh, another thing is that, if you look at the kind of people available in the market, the world is also changing. We have been hearing about full-time employees. And you will always think that I'll work full-time. If you're talking about people who work in the companies. But there is a concept of part-time also. There is a concept of contract labor also, of contract employees. There is an outsource employee. There is something called temp employees. All this is there. But now what is going to happen, which has already happened in US, there is a concept called gig worker. 
Now, what is a gig worker? Gig workers are people who are highly specialized, but they are not full time. They don't work full time. They are not on contract also. And what they do is that they come in for a special project or as a replacement. For example, say we were taught that to get the right talent, develop the right talent, and retain the talent. This is what I have been doing throughout my life. But now, <coughs> challenge will be how to access talent, which type of talent, how to curate talent, how to enrich individual experiences. This is what is very important going forward. And the workplace, jo aapka office hai, ya aapka jo shop floor hai, that is going for a big change. Now, there are offices where you don't have a fixed place in your office. You don't have a seat allotted. When you come to office, there is a flexible time. There is a hybrid working. You go, whatever seat is available, you have to work there. Right? You don't have an allocated seat. And this is happening in many companies. And not everybody comes every day. So you have seats available. You have to just need a place to work. So that is, we are seeing flexible working, work, hybrid working, work from home. All these are new models. And if you look at what we call the uh, in the workplace, if you look at factories, now in the factories, you cannot have work from home. People will anyway have to come. But what is happening in the factories is that level of automation is going up. Means all difficult job. All jobs which has got quality issues are all handled by uh, robots or it's called it's called digital, physical plus digital. And uh, then there are issues around data, <laughs> lot of data, data security because everything is becoming digital. So all this is uh, what I'm trying to say that people, process, and technology all will be redefined. And you are at the cusp. You will be entering into an era where the pace of change will be much faster. And that's why it's all the more important that you are well equipped. Either you will perform or you will perish. Let me tell you very honestly. The world is going to be very, very challenging. Very, very challenging. Just having an MBA degree will not be sufficient. You have to sharpen your skill. You have to continuously reskill. In fact, to the extent that let me tell you, World Economic Forum, way back, 3-4 years back, they said that 42% of the you know existing core skills will become redundant. That skill will not be required at all. If driverless car comes into play, say for example, 20 years down the line, drivers will be required. That skill is gone. So, what they are trying to say is that by 2030, more than a billion people will need to be re-skilled. New skills they have to acquire. In fact, just to tell you, in India, just for an example I am telling you, like when we were making cars 20 years back or 30 years back, the car was totally designed in Japan, not in India. We never had that capability. What we were doing is, doing design engineering, means adapting it to the Indian condition. That's all. And some value engineering we were doing. Not the full design. Somewhere around 2005-06, we, we got the chance to design a car. But the capability was not available in India. Our engineers were not uh, capable of doing that. So, they were, our people were going to Japan, they were getting trained. So, in 2005 and 2006, you have heard about a car called Swift? So let me tell you, 50% of the engineers were Indian. And that was the first time our people actually worked into a full body design. And that car, when it was launched as a hatchback, became a global success. Became a global success. And let me tell you, most of these Swift, if you see in any country outside of India, they are actually made in Gurgaon. It was not made in Japan. So that was the first experience. But then slowly when we decided that we will do full body design here, that skill was not available here. There are many other processes which is required. And we had to get talent from US, Italy, 
help our, train our people and that's how when we launched our Reza model, this is 100% conceived design in India, not, not a single Japanese is involved. So that level of skill these people have acquired. Secondly, when I talk about skills like crash or skills like many other uh, such skills. So you have to continuously reskill yourself. Your institute will help you acquire the basic knowledge. You will be just learning the basics. But when you come into industry, you have to, you will be working in a domain. And when you are in a domain, try to sharpen your skill, reskill. Don't think that, uh, you know, what you have learned here will be sufficient for your life. No. Learning never ends. Learning will never end for anyone, let me tell you, if you want to be agile. If you, if you, if you want that you are agile, you are up to date, you will have to wait. So this is, this is something which I thought uh, uh, I should tell you. And uh, one last thing quickly. Again, I will ask you a uh, few questions. Uh, I talked about automotive, right? So, I said China is world number one in passenger car, which is world number two? Germany. Three? World number three? Where is India? India is number? Think, think, think. Seven. Six. Six. Abhi koi negative marks nahi hai. You can say anything. And I see complete silence at the back. Back benches. Shall I come there to ask? Yes, gentlemen. Where is India? In passenger car. Ninth. Wild guess. See, India is fourth, fourth largest. India is fourth largest in passenger car. In the motorcycle or number four. But what about commercial vehicle? Traction buses. Any guess? Number two. This may be number one. Number two. Number two. Very good. Think, think. Number three. Number six. How is this a case? We are number seven in the world. Again, I am telling you, the penetration is very low. And that is a good news. That is a good news. Why I am asking you such questions is that, please, uh, you know, this, your awareness about domain, sectors, market has to be very high. And these are some of the questions when you will actually be sitting in the placement. They will ask you an abrupt question like this. And there you will not have a chance. You will say ninth or third. <laughs> you are gone. You have to be sharp for the company you are sitting. And this is a golden opportunity to sharpen your skills, not only in terms of your academic excellence, your personality, your general awareness, your cognitive behaviors. All these are very, very important and these two here will help you sharpen that. You can take your psychometric test and you will get results on many of the factors. As an employer, when we go to any of any, any B school. Normally we take written exam and there are other assessment. Once you cross all those and when we see your academic excellence from 10, 12, graduation and PG. Lehman crash happened. People are aware? What is Lehman? Are you aware of Lehman crash? What is that? Anybody can explain? Which year? 2008. Despite the fact that that uh, you know this was audited under SOX, it failed. 
subprime loan is the main reason for that. So what I am trying to say for others, don't think that people in HR or uh, marketing need not know about SOX or IFRS or IGAP. You will have to understand all these things. I am not saying that you will be working on this. But the basic knowledge of this is required. And let me tell you one thing. Whichever college I go, I ask very crazy questions to candidates and very simple questions. Very simple. And they miserably fail in that. Let me tell you. I, I don't ask very tough questions. I will ask a candidate you belong to which place. Say for example, somebody says I am from Hyderabad. So very good. Or somebody says I am from Kolkata. Then I will ask questions from history and geography also. I'll ask very simple question, okay, which is the famous place here? So say for example, uh, this fellow says that, okay, uh, you know, Hussain Sagar Lake is very famous here. So I'll ask him next question, is it natural or man-made? Then I'll ask who made it, who was the, and which year it was made. <laughs> and then I'll ask, you were born in this city? He said yes. So, if you are from Delhi and you say, I don't know the history of Delhi, then it means your quality of mind is not there. You know Malviya Nagar, you know uh, Saket, uh, you know all these places, you know all eating joint. I ask you about all PVR, you will tell me where all PVRs are or which mall is where. But if I ask you little deeper, little deeper, you are gone. Why I am telling you this is, don't think that if you are in finance, the person will ask you about uh, you know audit or something. They may ask you something like this. This is just to test your quality of mind. This is not something that you learn or you mug up. This is what you learn when you are in school. Somebody will know, no sir, I read it but I forgot. Do you, do you forget ABCD? Everybody will remember. You learnt it way back when you were a kid. So what, why I am emphasizing on this is that this is the golden opportunity to do team building, relationship building, building your communication skill, your body language, your uh, you know other uh, abilities that you are looking at. So this environment gives you that opportunity. And that is why you will have workshops, case studies, you will have many more such uh, people coming and talking to you, giving you a variety of uh, knowledge and thoughts. So, I think uh, not to make uh, this session very uh, serious, on a lighter note, but this I am telling you because this is going to help you all sharpen your skills and build up a great career. So, my best wishes to all of you. Do well, study well and enjoy also. So thanks a lot. <laughs>